OK, it's past 11 o'clock now, so I'll get started. Like I said at the start, thank you all for joining today for this webinar, which was going to be for Recycle Week, but it got cancelled. And But we just thought we'd still continue with the webinar today, talking about how to optimise your internal waste strategy. Before we begin, I just want to say some of you might have heard that we're changing our name officially in November to Recora. It's not because we've changed owners or we've been bought or anything, but just we're known by lots of different names. So we've got Paper Round, BPR Group, Secure Paper. We've recently acquired another waste management company, Reef. So we're just bringing everyone under one umbrella and we're going to be known as Recora moving forward. So for today's webinar, how to optimize your internal waste strategy, I'm Rory Capra, the head of sustainability for Recora. And today I'm just going to do a bit of a journey, kind of looking back at the history of waste management and waste strategies, and then look at how we can optimize waste strategies within buildings and for tenants and, and anyone, um, and how that's based on kind of a partnership between the supplier and the building, and then look at what we can actually do to optimize it, and then kind of leave you with, a, with an action to think bigger for the future. So, start like i said about looking at the history of the waste industry so just by setting the script setting the scene um it used to be a bad news industry it used to be known as a bit of a dirty industry excuse the pun um, and people have this preconceived notion that we are all just a bunch of cowboys and it'll probably end up in the thames anyway so it doesn't really matter but times have changed and actually the headlines you see now are not about companies collecting the waste but more about other people involved in the chain. So whether that be people who are fly tipping because they don't want to use actual waste companies, um, sewage being dumped, that was the big news of the last month or so, sewage being dumped in the sea instead of it being treated properly. And then consumers who want, um, want the latest technology and the latest item and the throwaway culture that we have. So just build up of waste is just increasing. So this is a mixture of individuals not doing the right thing, um, organizations not doing the right thing, and society as a whole um, just changing. So like I said, it's not the waste management companies that are bad anymore, we're all perfect, it's everyone else. Oh, wait, where did that come from? Um, I'm sure some of you have seen the recent Panorama documentary, which illustrated how TerraCycle, uh, a big waste management company, were not doing exactly what they said they were doing with some of their items. So even though a situation as a whole, um, the majority of waste management companies are doing the right thing with their waste, this just shows again that you need to be working with a reputable waste management company, e.g. Recora, um, so you don't get caught up with those last few cowboys out there. So I've spoken about the waste industry in terms of how it's changed, um, but what's actually happened within buildings? Has that changed over time or more recently? So I'm sure you can we have all can relate to these pictures here where you've got and got something and you're not quite sure what bin you can put it in so people still unsure people still confused the waste industry is always evolving there's always new items um, coming onto the market different types of plastics and things so start by saying that people often don't know what item goes in what bin but the reason why people don't know what where their item goes isn't that simple. If we think about other part of our lives and if we don't know something, if we don't know how to do something, then we'll normally ask Dr. Google or we'll speak to someone or we might even read the instructional posters that are right in front of our faces when we're trying to complete that action to do the right thing. But rarely we will just continue to do something wrong because we're, we're just confused by it. And 
Why people do this, I believe strongly that it's just that people don't care and people it doesn't affect them if you do it correctly or incorrectly. There's no negative consequence if you put something in the wrong bin or if you don't do it correctly and it takes thought and effort to do it right. And if you put those two things together as human beings, we're very adverse to that and we'd rather just take the simple option um, out. So. In order to resolve this, we need to think we need to think more than just paper and plastic. We need to think about how waste can play a wider role in your building. And the way in which this can be done is through partnerships. Um, so whether that that's partnerships with your waste management provider and with the building. So and if we do this, if we create good partnerships um, and create a good waste strategy within a building, then we can do so much more and waste within your building can do so much more. You can achieve your waste and recycling targets, but actually that filters into so many more ESG targets. Um, they're not necessarily the headline grabbing targets such as renewable energy or electric cars, but um, waste and bins, everyone uses them, so they're, they're targets and different things that we can achieve if you have a good partnership with the building who wants to do more and with, with a waste management supplier who's able to achieve those things with you. So in order to do that, just I always like to go through some top tips because um, they're my favourite slides and I get worked up whenever I talk about them. Um, here are some symbols that you might recognize. So on the top left hand side there, we've got some triangles, triangle shapes with arrows going round and they're connecting with each other. So that would imply a closed loose system. Um, so obviously that would mean that it's recyclable, but that would be too easy. This symbol just identifies what type of plastic it is. So number one is your PET, like your water bottle. Um, and the general rule of thumb is that numbers one, two and five are recyclable and the others are not recyclable. Then you've got below that the new sort of labelling system that's being introduced in supermarkets. So the left hand side, the green one means yes, you can recycle on the right hand side with the black with the line through it. No, you can't. And then a black one without a line through it where it says check your local recycling generally means that in your normal let's say office work or or home bins it's not recyclable but if you go to a recycling center or if you go to a large supermarket then you can recycle them there and then my favorite symbol on the right hand side is green it's got arrows clearly going in a circular formation of course this means it can be recyclable well again that would just be too easy this symbol was part of an EU directive back when we were in the EU, and it means that the manufacturer has paid for the safe disposal of that packaging. And that could mean that the manufacturer has paid for the for that packaging to be safely put in landfill for the next 500 years, not that it is safely recycled. And the worst thing is the UK did not sign up to this directive, even though we were part of the EU at the time. So that symbol is just there to annoy us and confuse us. And then the next big tip is that these items on screen are really important to be collected separately. So glass can be recycled an infinite amount of times um, as long as it stayed in the loop. Coffee cups are people think they're paper, but they've got a plastic waterproof lining on the inside. So need to be collected separately and reprocessed differently to paper food. And if there's one thing that you take away from today, please, please, please make sure food is separate. If you think about how heavy food is, so it can have a big impact on your recycling rates and targets and things, and it can also have a very damaging impact on the other items in the bin, such as paper. If food gets on paper, it makes it very hard to recycle. And then shredded paper needs to be separate as well. And I said this is about a partnership to optimize your internal waste strategy. So we're, um, I'm asking you guys to, to do these separate bin or have these separate bins on site and to educate staff about the symbols. So then what are we going to do to help you with that? Well, we have a suite of different resources, whether that be posters, whether that be booklets, whether that be our online portal that gives you all the information or different videos that we have. 
um, that simply just explain all the different things that we do. Video's been a bit slow, um, but we've got a big suite of resources on internally and also on our portal, which you can all access easily. But if there's any things that you think would be really beneficial for you on site, then please let me make us aware so then we can produce that for you and for this recycling week or what was going to be recycling week we've got this brand new resource that we've just created um it's a simple online audit form or survey that takes five minutes to complete and basically it'll just ask you questions about what you're doing on site. So have you got food bins on site? Do you use color code systems? Things like that. Um, we've created two surveys. So the one on the left, the end client survey, that would be for someone who has a direct relationship with us. So if we speak directly to you and you speak directly to us, then you would fill out that form. So generally speaking, that would be for the building managers or cleaning managers that we work with. And then on the right hand side is a tenant survey. So if you um, have a premises within a building or on a site in which we service, but you might not necessarily have a direct relationship with us, then fill out the one on the right hand side. They're very similar, but just some some questions are different. Like I said, they take five minutes. So if you get bored of me talking for the second half of this webinar, then please feel free to to start filling out that survey. Um, but I'll send this presentation around at the end and you'll get those QR codes and you'll get the the Microsoft Forms um, links so you can fill them out anytime. Um, again, kind of working on the partnership idea key to having a good partner is to make sure you know what they're doing with your stuff when they're out of sight and this is true for your waste partner as well so we'll just have a quick look at what happens to your recycling so started i talked a little bit about TerraCycle and how they weren't necessarily doing what they should have been doing with your waste and recycling at Recora, we're very transparent about everything we collect and everything we do. It all comes back to our own material recovery facility, which you can see on the right hand side there. Um, everything comes back apart from general waste, which goes to straight to Corey Environmental in Kent. It goes along on barges along the River Thames, where it is incinerated to generate electricity. On the left hand side, you can see a map of where we send all our items to be reprocessed. Everything stays within England, apart from our paper, which goes to northern France. That reason for that is because geographically it's the closest place that we can send our paper and then put it back on your desk in six weeks time. And again, using TerraCycle as an example, we don't send anything to a reprocessor that we personally haven't been to. It's very easy for organizations to write on a piece of paper and say they're doing all these great and wonderful things, but we actually go and do audit checks at those places. And if that reprocessor is then sending it on to a further reprocessor, we do those checks as well. And if any of our clients want to come and do a tour of our facility, we, we do them regularly. So more than um, welcome to come there. But equally, if you want to go to a reprocessor, um, then we can we can organize those visits as well for you. And once you've done these things and you've doing all these great and wonderful things, you want to be able to report on them in some way, whether that be for your annual reports, your monthly reports or for for accreditation such as BRIAM or GRESB, you need to know the data. We're starting to do a lot more work on accreditations and data needed for that. So if anyone is struggling with that at the minute, then please let me know. Um, but you need you, you need data and we have just created a we've always had a portal, but it's just been through a massive revamp um, and this can give you all the stats that you need and it can even give you stats that you didn't think you needed until you've been on the portal and then you've seen what we can what we can provide you with. And another good thing about this portal is that in terms of transparency and being able to trust your waste supplier, this information has all been uploaded from the bins directly onto our vehicles. This hasn't been 
there's been no human interference in this data. So it's all real information. We're not skewing the numbers to make ourselves look good or to make you look better. Um, we are giving you the truth, the whole truth and, and nothing but the truth, let's say, whenever you look at this data on the portal. And I started saying about how people don't care about waste and recycling in buildings, really, and, and putting things in the right bin. And in order to change that, we need to bring waste into 21st century and we need to look more at waste and how it's not just um, paper and plastic. There's a lot more to it. And it can feed very much into your ESG performance. Um, I'm not going to speak about the social impacts um, that it can have. They're vast in waste and recycling, not just here within the UK, but it's a, it's a global issue and a global industry. So it can have massive impacts on social implications. Governance, the laws are changing probably sometime next year and definitely around food recycling, but probably other waste streams as well. But I'm just going to speak a bit more about the environmental impacts that waste and recycling can have. And in terms of what we are doing um, and around the carbon is we are um, we set a target of net zero by 2030. That's a science based target, which means we're going to have real carbon conduct, real carbon reductions. We're not going to do what other companies and other bigger companies are saying and how they're carbon neutral since 2007 and different things like that, which basically just means they planted a lot of trees in the last 15 years. We're actually going to reduce our carbon and this is mainly going to be done by electrifying our fleet. So 80% of our emissions from our vehicles are, are from our vehicles. So we're aiming to fully electrify our fleet by 2028. We'll have three on the road in January, which will be the largest privately owned commercial RC fee fleet in England. And even though three doesn't sound like a lot, if you think about five years ago, how many electric cars there were on the road, there wasn't that many. Now, over the last five years, there's been a massive increase and there's a lot more. And then over the next five years, that same thing is going to happen with larger vehicles. So it'll be easier to put them on the road. We've also investing in e-bike deliveries for our office supplies division. So we work with Zedify and 95% of our e of our deliveries in London are done on e-bikes in the last mile. So that's kind of what we're doing around reducing our carbon and then in terms of our environmental footprint. So what could you do um, to reduce your carbon emissions? And the main way to do that is just to reduce. So to reduce carbon, you just got to reduce. And I'm not talking just reduce your general waste, but reduce everything you dispose of regardless of the bin. So if you're not throwing away that item, then it doesn't need to be made in the first place. It doesn't need to be recycled. And here are just some examples that you can do. So don't print out documents that you don't need. Just read them on the screen. Bring a reusable cup to the to your local coffee shop. Don't get a disposable one. And if you're having lunch, then bring in your own lunch or take away, take your own um, reusable container to that stall. Don't get one of their containers where you're not quite sure whether it's recyclable, compostable, degradable or biodegradable or too much food contamination anyway and you're not quite sure what bin it should go in. Um, if you bring your own reusable container then you don't have those issues. How we can help you with that, we have numerous waste streams available um, that you can use. We have up to 30 different streams, um, some of them on the left hand side there and we also have our sustainable box and our sustainable hub which is kind of it allows tenants within buildings to have their own waste streams without it being a full office waste stream. So if one coffee shop in the building is producing lots of coffee, then they might want the coffee stream, but then the offices might not want a coffee stream, but they can do it their own them by themselves and they don't need to do it through the service charge and whatnot. So if you want to learn more about that, then please let me know. And again, once you're doing all this great and wonderful things, you really you want to be able to shout about them and, and talk about them. 
So just like our online portal has been through a big revamp, um, our carbon report has also been through a big revamp. So it, we, we now have a sort of a summary page which kind of has the headline issues or the head not issues headline facts about what's happened that month or that quarter or that year depending on what report you want and then there's also a page that's got the more detailed report um, if you want to go down to the finer details and our carbon reports we don't use industry averages or national averages to tell you your carbon emissions we give you your true real information we know exactly what vehicle picked up your waste we know exactly how much waste was picked up by that vehicle and therefore we can assign exact carbon um, amounts to your collections we're not using national averages because we know that london is a different animal to you know the highlands in scotland type idea so why should we be using the same national averages and also means as we further electrify our fleet you'll be able to see those benefits because if you're using national averages then you're not going to see the benefits of having a waste supplier that uses electric vehicles and then finally you kind of our bread and butter and what we do is online on-site support um and again this is a partnership with the on-site support so recycling improvement strategies where we come on site and we give you detailed reports about how you can improve on site we can write those reports but we also need to work with the with our client the tenant the building whatever to implement those changes we can do waste composition analysis we can do deep dives into your bins tell you there's lots of food in the general waste bin but if the if the site isn't going to make the chain make the changes or take on board the recommendations then it doesn't really matter and then back of house training where we make sure everyone on site knows what the um, what the waste management process is and lunch and learn so then we make sure everyone in the in the front of the building knows exactly what the waste management processes are so even though these things might seem like they they work in silo we come and do the recycling improvement strategies again this takes a partnership between the two and then finally just looking at the future and what the future holds or, or means for waste management but more specifically in how you can really optimize your waste management strategy and you can really take it to a next level and not just think about paper and plastics and think more about the wider ideas and the and the wider impacts that waste management can have on your on your wider esg targets and goals so just a bit of a call to action here just some things that you can that you can take away so number one talk with colleagues about you know what what you're confused about what you're not confused about if you see someone doing it wrong then then tell them what the correct process is but then wider talk to them about the biggest issues that's facing facing our world in terms of environmental issues and things like that and then the second one go beyond compliance is kind of the big one go beyond the norm or, or what's expected and this would be my biggest call because all the other things kind of happen if you do this if you go beyond compliance if you the positive ambition loop the more you do the more other people will do and then that'll eventually drive policy but i plead with everyone to think about their waste strategy and think about why you're doing things in a certain way I absolutely hate recycling rates as a measurement and I'm very open about that and I don't believe that's how we should judge if it's a good waste strategy or a bad waste strategy. Um, so think about and we've got other ways in which we can measure how good your waste strategy is. Um, so don't hang your hat just on one figure that, that doesn't actually tell you the whole story and in order to do that be bolder with what you do in your building. So why not ban single use coffee cups from the building? Have coffee cup bins at, the, at your front door and make a stance and say, you need to dispose of them here. We're a non single use coffee cup building. Remove printers from the office and only have a select few and then make sure that it's people need to go to that printer to print off that item, have a little bit of a barrier in the way so people aren't just clicking print, print, print whenever they don't need to. And 
If you still have under desk bins, then please, please, please be bold enough to just remove them. And I guarantee you that in two weeks time, the staff won't even remember that they had under desk bins and they'll just be using the bin banks that you put in place. As I started by saying how the waste industry kind of has evolved over the last 20 years. It did used to be a bunch of cowboys who, who, and you weren't quite sure what was happening, but the vast majority of waste management companies now are doing the right things and are doing more with your waste and recycling. Society has changed. People's desires to do more has changed, but the overall perception in buildings amongst the users of bins is still kind of one of confusion and not quite sure what they're doing. And, and they don't feel like they have an impact if they do do the right thing because there's all these headline news about renewable energy and electric cars. But in my head and in my mind, in reality, everyone uses waste on a daily basis. Everyone uses bins on a daily basis. Not everyone can afford an electric car. So if we just focus on all the little things that we can do, all the little changes, all the little improvements that we can do, then that'll soon all add up to a hell of a lot um, and change and positive impact that we can have. So that is everything. Um, from me, I, I should have really said at the start about questions, but I apologize, I forgot. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen and the um, there'll be a little chat box and Q&A function. So please write in any questions that you have. And then you've got the QR codes there as well. Uh, but like I said, I can send this out to everyone. So if I stop sharing my screen, And if you just type in any questions that anyone has, if you just type them in. Into the chat or into the Q&A box and then I'll answer any questions anyone has. So someone has asked how we access the portal. Um, the portal is for, let's say, our direct clients um, primarily. Um, so they, if they are on our system, then they have access to the portal. If you're a tenant within a building that we service, we can provide you access to that portal, but we would need to be, we would need to make sure that's okay with the with the building manager, whoever our client is. So if you do want access to the portal and you don't currently have access, then please um, send me an email or send someone an email and we'll be able to provide you access with that. So asked about takeaway coffee cups and would a typical coffee cup be disposed of in a general waste bin or recycled bin once used? So coffee cups have paper around the outside and then a plastic lining on the inside. This means that they can't be recycled in a normal recycling bin because they will be sent off to a paper mill and they cannot remove this plastic lining. So they need to be sent off to a coffee cup um coffee cup reprocessor so if you don't have a coffee cup waste stream on site then the coffee cups need to go in a general waste bin if you have a coffee cup stream on site then put it in that bin if it goes in a recycle bin it will end up in as general waste anyway shredded paper has to be collected separately because it at our materials recovery facility and at I would say 90 odd percent of material recovery facilities there's a fines section that removes really small small bits just bits and bobs that are found in bins this is to stop those little things getting caught up in the conveyor belts and the machinery and damaging them so at this fine section is where shredded paper is lost General rule of thumb, anything smaller than a post-it note is going to get lost at this section. Um, so if it's smaller than a post-it note, then it will be, then it should be in general waste. And that's something that gets 
gets lost at this area is normally bottle tops. But if you put if you squeeze the bottle to remove all the air and put the bottle top back on the plastic bottle, then that will stay on and it'll get recycled. Would it be a good idea for the UK to ban plastic bottles and use glass or aluminium? Um, I don't I don't know. And the reason is. It's it's very complicated in a sense that how much how much energy or how much environmental degradation or how much um, work does it take to produce a plastic bottle compared to producing glass to compared to producing aluminium and then when it's recycled over time what's the environmental impacts of that and so on and so on i would argue that we should ban all plastic bottles all glass and all aluminium and just have reusable ones there shouldn't be any disposable things we should just have reusable bottles reusable containers and things so then you're not getting into the argument of which one is slightly better than the other just you know that if you're reusing it and you're not throwing it away then that's that's good so tenants within a building um arrange our own private recycling as opposed to using the building collection so yes we our sustainable hub is kind of the idea where tenants can have their own recycling streams without it being part of the full building waste streams so we can provide you with let's say for example food we can provide you with food sacks and then you have a bin in the loading bay that's just for your food sacks so yes if you want to have your own tenant um recycling service then please if if you can't do that through your building um then you can contact us and we can help you with that as well So ask if we can provide data based on your, if you're within a, a part of the building. So if there's 10 floors and you have two floors of that building, can we provide you with waste data just for those two floors? Um, unless there are different ways in which you can do that. You can have a Waitron system in which you can weigh the bins as they come down or weigh the sacks as they come down and then assign it um so but that takes a lot of infrastructure and and things like that if you wanted to if we can provide you with data that's it's not a lot of authority attached to that data because we would do it based on number of employees in the building and how many employees you have the floor space of the building and the floor space that you have and that's not a very scientific approach to do that data, but we can provide you with the data in that way. Um, but uh, there are more sophisticated ways in which you can do it. Um, so, but you would need to talk to your building manager more about how you could do that. Um, could you organize a session on recycling labels? Um, that, I mean, we'd be here till Christmas if I was to do a meeting just about recycling labels and all the intricacies and the confusions. But I'm trying to think if we have a video on our YouTube channel about it. Um, we might do, but yes, that is something. If if people if people want more information about the recycling labels, then that's definitely something that we can look at. So if someone uses glass bottles. If we use a reusable bottle, only then we won't be able to get spring water, and we'll be just drinking tap water, which is not great. So. Um, so asked, do use glass bottles and bottles to then get um, spring water from the shops rather than using um, tap water? And if yes, if you if you want to buy water from the shops, then I would say glass bottles probably is better. But again, not knowing the full life cycle of the two items um but again i would i would argue that try to avoid buying products that have a single use or or short-term use anyway and try and use things that are more reusable
So asked about electric cars and how the long term impacts of electric cars. So the the ESG issues with electric cars is the lithium batteries. Yes, and lithium is a very rare resource and those resources are often found in. Um, well, they're found and then conflict is develops in that area because it's a high value rare resource so lots of people want it um you can recycle batteries after long usage um the issue is more that there really isn't enough lithium in the world let's say for everyone to have an electric car so you can recycle batteries after their use and, and reuse that lithium but um there's just there's a very small amount of lithium in the world to be able to, for everyone to have reuse or electric cars so that's more of the issue associated with them